is Jack, and for the project I'll be creating a Ray Trace 3D audio simulator. The motivation for my project is the fact that we have developed tremendously advanced 3D rendering and animation systems, but we often ignore the aspect of sound. Most of the recent research is mainly about real-time sound simulation. Now, this may give a satisfactory result in a video game, but not the best practice for 3D rendered movies. This project, on the other hand, aims at creating an as realistic sound simulation as possible where runtime is not a problem. I will attempt to use a ray trace renderer to simulate the sound reflection and absorption given a certain scene. To fully explain what I plan on doing for this project, let's first talk about how human perceives sound. Now, normally, people would assume that we use the difference between the volume in the left and right ear to determine the direction of the sound, even though that plays a part in our ability to locate a sound source, the primary mechanism that we use for sound localization is actually the arrival time difference between the left and the right ear. Let's try this out. It is recommended that you wear a pair of headphones for this session. Let's try and get a sample. how here this happens. We'll go with this one. Let's split it into two different channels. Let's shift the left ear forward a little bit. It should sound like it comes from the right. How about the right ear? But arrival difference alone is not sufficient to determine the exact direction of the sound. It can only give us which half of the hyperboloid the sound source belongs to. This is also called the cone of confusion. Humans have actually developed a much more sophisticated technique to recognize the sound direction. Aside from arrival time, we also use the timbre or the frequency response of the sound to dictate if the sound comes from the top, bottom, front, or back. Since our heads and ears are shaped a certain way, when the sound reaches each ear, some frequencies will have been filtered out. To completely simulate the frequency absorption of the human head is not a trivial task. Instead, we can build an actual mannequin head that has almost the same structure as a human head and put microphones in each ear. Then we can move a uniform sound sword around the mannequin head and record the audio response along with the coordinates of the sensors. The audio response is called the Head Related Impulse Response, or HIR for short. We can then get the Fourier transform of the HIR to get the Head Related Transfer Function, or HRTF for short. We can interpolate between these transfer functions to approximate the frequency absorption of the sound source direction. To see if this is a step in the right direction, I did some preliminary tests using MATLAB. Let's take a look. Again, you will need a pair of headphones to fully observe the effect. Here's a clean audio sample. Let's drop it on the table. Here's a different sample of the coin, but I'll drop it on the floor this time. Here's what the image looks like when I render it only for the sound. It may not seem to you that the location of the sound source is clearly apparent. This is due to the fact that I have not implemented the head related transfer function into the localization function. I found an old head related impulse response database from a company called IRCAM in France, and I will use that to generate my head related transfer function. I also need to play around with the frequency cutoff of the high and the low pass version of the audio. For now, I picked 750 Hz arbitrarily. Thank you for listening, and here are my references.